Lawmark is down in Alabama. They passed two bills now uh, as the Republican Party continues their aggressive assault on trans and LGBTQ rights in the country. Two more bills where uh, they're looking to stop general civil rights for folks in the country. Let's start with that first one because Alabama lawmakers have now passed one on Thursday. They will criminalize gender affirming health care for transgender youth with a threat of 10 years in prison for medical providers. There's a lot to this now. The Alabama Vulnerable Child Compassion and Protection Act is what they call it. It would make it a felony for doctors to prescribe puberty blockers or hormones to minors who identify as transgender. Doctors are also prohibited from performing surgeries that help minors transition. So according to this, uh, to the bill, nurses, counselors, teachers, principals, and school administrators uh, at any public or private school in the state are forbidden from withholding from a minor's parent or legal guardian information related to a minor's perception that his or her gender or sex is inconsistent with his or her sex. Republican Representative Wes Allen, he likened this initiative to laws that prevent minors from getting tattoos or buying nicotine products. He says, we make decisions in this body all the time that are, to, that are there to protect children from making decisions that could permanently harm them. So there's also uh, the second part about this. I was mentioning there's two bills. This other part is more of an amendment that was added to a bill that we already could have guessed would have happened down in Alabama. Let's jump into that one. So the Alabama Senate also passed a bill that would require students in public schools to use bathrooms or changing rooms that match the gender of their original birth certificates. This is part is where I was talking about the amendment that was attached to that bill now has to go back to the House for a vote and that would prohibit classroom discussion on sexual orientation or gender identity in certain grades. It sounds a lot like the don't say gay bill down there in Florida that Ron DeSantis does not want people to call that. Lastly, what they said about that particular addition there, we just don't think it's appropriate to be talking about homosexuality and gender identity is what Senator Shay Shulnet said. You know, they should be talking about math, science and writing, especially in elementary school. I want to unleash you guys on this subject, but first, because there was a lot of thoughts I had and I don't want to filibuster it too long because this really got me to a point where I was like, let's look up and find out exactly what it is that they're doing and why that they're doing it. But first, I want y'all's thoughts. First, have at it, who you guys want? <laughs> Yeah, I, this is okay. So this policy is really, really infuriating because, to my understanding, to my knowledge, there's not any exemption for people who are already on hormones. So in effect, anybody that is 19 or younger in Alabama right now that is currently doing HRT will literally be forced to be will be forced to detransition because of this law being put in place. So first and foremost, it's already horrific. And if you're talking about like the impact off of health, right? It it's actually, believe it or not, not great to force people to detransition if they're already in the transition process. And it can do um, a lot of harm and slow down somebody's transition. Additionally, on top of this, forcing Forcing schools to tell parents when when children don't feel comfortable telling their parents, they don't feel comfortable for a reason, right? Kids know whether or not their kids or whether or not their parents for the most part are gonna be accepting. And there's a huge crisis right now among LGBTQ youth, especially trans youth um, being homeless because their parents will kick them out of the house. So what we We'll see as a result of this is both an increase in like depression and potentially suicide as a result of forcing people to detransition. And additionally, we're probably gonna see a huge spike in homelessness of trans youth who are being outed by their school administrators to their parents who are unaccepting. So many bad things here, man. I mean, where to start? Number one, why are these people so against science? Why are they? not willing to listen to any science. I read the article, the article states that this is not a common thing that's happening every day. This this is this state lawmaker who said we stop kids from getting tattoos and nicotine because they don't they don't want to do harm to themselves. First of all, hey state lawmaker, uh, tattoos are no longer considered doing harm to yourself. Tattoos, every kid has it. I don't know what decade this guy's living in, <laughs> tattoos are all over the place. Now that said, I'm not a tattoo guy. I know that some people get some really bad tattoos and they regret it later. But that said, it's too late, bro. And secondly, he's making it sound like a gender transition is a decision that's just made at the counter like a pack of gum. No, man, where's the science? The science says that when somebody who's young decides they wanna go through this, they go through a lengthy period. It's like buying a house, but a million times more in depth. You are, you, you see people, you talk to people. It's not like you just walk into an office and someone goes, boom, you're done, no. So 
these people and their resentment of science and they're not they're neglecting science and as ben said it leads to more depression it leads to more people living in bad situations and it's a shame because a lot of these people have had to live in an oppressed state their whole lives they've been oppressed by their religion and I think that a lot of times religion is at the base of a lot of this stuff. I'm not a religious person. I'm all for anybody who is religious and and their religion helps them and is good for them. But you try to impose it on other people. This all comes from there. It comes from imposing your religion on these youths, these young people. What's the plural of youths? Youths? youths. Anyway, youths. imposing this, youths, mm. uh, imposing this on these people who are you know what, we're making some progress. Before we started this call, Ben and I were talking about this feels like it's Groundhog's Day. These people seem to pick a subject every few uh, you know, months or years and they go to their old catalog. They go, well, you know what, let's bring it, let's play the old LGBTQ record again. Ah, I remember that one, the anti-LGBTQ, yeah. ah, it's back, oh my God. I, I, I think let's do the anti-immigrant one. Let's do the, <laughs> I mean, it's just, I'm sorry, but I can't. No, I, I think the time frame, the random time frame that you're talking about is every election cycle. That's about the time. That's why we saw the caravans coming. We hear about, the, hear about the caravans coming up from the south. They're coming to invade your country. They're coming to take your jobs, kill your children, and also haul all those drugs from the, up through the southern border. That was the, the, uh, the pushing point during midterms before, and after that all ended, Back to normal situations. We're not hearing about caravans anymore. Ben, I want to go off of what you said because that's where I had a lot to say. I'm gonna try and make this quick because, first of all, the thought process from people like this, from these legislators down in Alabama, is we're protecting uh, parents. That's what Ron DeSantis in Florida is saying. We're here for parents' rights. They need to know what's going on with their children. If schools are keeping it from them, then we're excluding parents. Okay, this particular bill has uh, uh, doctors, nurses, counselors, anyone who uh, talks to a kid about this and it becomes a trusted person with that kid that they then have to immediately tell their parent or else they're gonna have all these problems. Or a doctor who goes about some of the processes. What if there's a parent who supports their child? You see the assumption there is that these parents don't support their children and who they are and who they've told them that they are. And probably most, most cases of a parent who's paying attention to their child, they're not that surprised of who their child is. So the first thought is none of these parents are gonna accept their kid for who they are which is a hateful stance to take, which actually is pretty negative if you think you're protecting parents who are rejecting their children. And Ben, you pointed out there's a good percentage of folks that don't do that. Now, some of these people could be seen as a, a, a mandatory reporters. I looked up uh, Alabama Department of Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention. There's rules about mandatory reporters, and if one of those children comes and says, I'm afraid at home, my parents will reject me, they might kick me out, I might end up homeless, I'm having suicidal thoughts, there's mandatory reporting that they have to do. So as mandatory reporters go, these individuals are not only vital to the reporting process, again, according to Alabama, but can also be very helpful in the follow-up services with someone's life. So also reporting abuse to a supervisor does not relieve the mandatory reporter's legal responsibility to personally file a, KA, a CAN report of abuse or neglect to the state. It has to go to authorities. So if they determine that a parent is probably gonna kick their kid out or abuse them, they have to report it. How does that work when it jives with the law, when they're trying to get people who would report it or who would talk to these children confidentially, will put them as the criminal? There's gonna be a collision from my search of the law, at least as far as reporting goes, it's gonna be a collision to which one of these folks is gonna be not within the law. Because they're too busy concerned about trying to inject themselves in other people's lives. And how much they wanna put their thoughts and their beliefs on someone's life. There's more to this because you mentioned uh, 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 homelessness, Ben. There's also suicide rates. Uh, LGBTQ youth are more than four times as likely to attempt suicide than their peers. The Trevor Project's 21 national survey on LGBTQ mental health found that 42% of them seriously considered attempting suicide in the past year, including more than half of transgender and non-binary youth. That's what happens. Also, I got more. Transgender and non-binary youth face elevated risk of depression, thoughts of suicide, and attempted suicide compared to youth who are cisgender and straight, including cisgender members of the LGBTQ community. I'm sure they haven't thought about the fact that there's different varying levels of folks within that community as well. They're all just horrible, crazy people, right? Continuing on, um, since we're talking about how suicide rates come, the assumption I'm sure they would say is, well, yeah, of course, they're, they're uh, considering suicide because their parents have abused them their whole lives to make them believe that they're not who they really are, who God made them to be. Hmm, weird how this study and science behind reality 
actually disprove those points. The minority stress model is the point here. It suggests that experiences of LGBTQ based victimization and the internalization of these experiences and these anti LGBTQ messages, which again is in this law, can compound and produce negative mental health outcomes and increase suicide risk among LGBTQ individuals. LGBTQ youth who reported experiencing four types of minority stress, which is physical harm, discrimination, housing instability, and change attempts by parents were 12 times at greater odds of attempting suicide compared to youth who experienced none. So okay, there's three more pages of this, but it's constant stats, statistics, studies, reality based on what it is that pushes folks to suicide and also homelessness and being detached from their parents. But who cares about all that? We're concerned about protecting the parents who we deem would hate their children. And number two, about these children. So what about the children that are killing themselves? How much do Republicans in the Alabama House care about children who are killing themselves? I thought they're the pro-life party. Well, it's the right kind of person that they want to have. I, I, I could read further and I've already gone far enough with this. Uh, last thoughts on this because this really annoyed me that this is their approach. Because again, to get votes in the midterm elections, not to protect children and definitely not to look out for parents. JR, before I let Ben talk, I will say to you, you just stated a bunch of scientific facts. They don't want to hear about science. They want to live in their la la land. And then the real quickly, they have the hypocrisy to criticize someone like the Taliban in Afghanistan being anti women, anti LGBTQ. And here in Alabama, I'm going to call them the Taliban. They're the Taliban of America, Taliban. <laughs> Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, and I mean, like what you touched on, I think is really important, especially because, like, what JR said is true, and we need to understand that, like, the suicide rates, the rates of depression, all these things drop down significantly whenever the community is supportive. But this is the thing. I think these Republicans know this. I think that these Republicans know this. They know that sending a message to trans youth, to queer youth, that they are not allowed, not accepted in the schools, not accepted by healthcare providers, and that they have to be reported on by their the school administrators. I think that this is an attempt by the Republicans to escalate, to make the problems worse, to increase depression, to increase suicide rates. If these Republicans want to prove me wrong, then they can read through all these facts. I don't know, do a do a whole homework report on it for me. I mean, seriously, because at this point, I have to assume that these Republicans have seen these numbers. It is the year 2022. They know exactly the impact of the law that they are trying to pass, that they passed. And, and I think that that's exactly what they want. I think that's, that's one point that I would love to have fleshed out because I wonder, man, I don't think they take it far enough. There's a laziness with these types of legislators and it's strictly based off of appealing to the most hateful group of their party. Look what they did with Donald Trump, because when he came out, they hated him. But once they discovered that he can generate some votes for them, suddenly they're all about Donald Trump. There's not much of a thought process that goes. And by the way, if it does to that point, which I, I, I actually, I, I don't completely write off. That shows even more how nefarious this thought process is. We just don't care about those folks' lives. We just don't care about it. Last thought, because you pointed out how community helps. More on this on the discrimination fact. Those who experience discrimination, they, they did all that in a twice amount. Of, here's the other part about it. Affirming spaces and activities, it says, especially at school, since we're talking about school. The Trevor Project's research has found that LGBTQ youth who reported having at least one LGBTQ affirming space had 35% reduced odds of reporting a suicide attempt in the past year. This is the strongest association being with LGBTQ affirming schools. They're fighting against anything that would help uh, folks that are trying to find their footing. And by the way, if we're worried about people in school talking about pro LGBTQ topics, um, I think everyone who's ever been through school knows. We've all heard about LGBTQ topics. We just hear it from friends, we hear it from enemies, we hear it from bullies all the time, but it's always negative. So are those things not allowed in school? What if I, what if I, I have a child that, uh, that identifies this way and is in school and is getting bullied? Do I as a parent get to hear about it? You should be reporting to me how they're talking about LGBTQ topics in school, right? Little Billy down the hallway was screaming at my kid. He's talking about it. Should, shouldn't they not be talking about it in school? No, you should only not talk about it if you're gonna say something positive. That's what this legislation does, it's disgusting.